I'm going to show you the most insane broken build in all of Lords of the Fallen. This build will let you one-shot bosses, and it'll make you completely invincible. This build is so overpowered that all the other YouTubes are going to copy the hell out of me on this one. If you can actually manage to get all the required pieces for this build, you can actually hit potentially over 10,000 damage in one single hit. This build is so crazy that it makes fighting that Red Grim Reaper guy in the Umbral look easy. And the best part about this build is a lot of it can actually be done early. So the core of this build can actually be found extremely early in the game. It's only the additional pieces that we'll have to get later on in a playthrough. So first, let's talk about the build for just a moment, and then I'm going to show you how to get the pieces for the core of the build, and then I'm going to explain how to get the different pieces for all the tertiary pieces of the build that just make it stronger and stronger and stronger. So this whole build revolves around a guy named Malhu. So this guy will let you socket your umbral lamp with an umbral eye which I'll show you how to get the Umbral Eye we need in this video, but it's the Umbral Eye of Loche. And what that eye does is it makes it so while you're charging a heavy attack, all damage done to you is received as withered health, so you can't die while charging a heavy attack. And on top of that, it gives you super armor while charging it. So while you're charging your heavy attack, you cannot be interrupted. So that's the core of the build, and then we can build around that. Now, there's a lot of variants, and you can do this a lot of different ways that you want, but for this build, the testing I've done and stuff, uh, I found kind of the best setup for this early. Later on, there's some better upgrades. So the Nahuda Ritual Hammer is by far the best for this because it does so much wither damage. And then we have the Anvil Hammer, which is the early game option. But later on, it can re be replaced with the Iron Wayfarer's Hammer. And I think there's another hammer later on that I haven't gotten to. But it's, it's just like, you know, min max in that teeny bit if you really want to go further. So I figured this out thanks to the help of another YouTuber named... All right, well, the YouTube's name is Ape Night Gaming. And I'll link to his channel in the description of this video. You should check him out, though, because he does crazy builds. And so he was talking to me about this build. His core idea was the Umbral Eye with the two Grand Hammers and then putting on a certain rune on one of the hammers we'll talk about in a second. And then from that, we spent two days picking this thing apart to make it as OP as possible. And that's what I'm going to be showing you in this video. But be sure to check him out, give him a sub. So if he makes crazy builds, he's really good at the math and stuff. So everything I'm going to show you in this video, I've already made a video specifically for each one. So I'm not going to go through like six minute videos for each one of this video will be like an hour long. But if you get confused on any of these when I explain how to get them, just check the description of this video. And I have an, a section in the description of this video for all the items. There's 80 years rage, anvil hammer, Nahuda ritual hammer, the umbral eye. Everything's in there one by one if it's not explained well enough for you in this video. So the core of the build for the basic version that most of you will want to use, especially early game, is like I said, the Nahuda Ritual Hammer, an Anvil Hammer, and then that Umbral Eye. That's the core. Then after that, we can build on it by having an uh, Inferno Catalyst, specifically the Searing Accusation, just because it's easy to get. But if you have a better one, feel free to use it. Uh, ideally, we want four spell slots, though. And then another big thing here that I like on it, now you don't have to do it this way, but I like having the Unblinking Root because it makes it so I can cast Umbral Sorceries with a non-Umbral Catalyst. And that makes it so I can use Umbral with an Inferno, and that's very nice, so I can use all these spells. And then the Pendant is going to be the Warrior's Claw. That's like the best Pendant you can get for it. And then the second ring is whatever the best ring you can get is. Now, there are rings out there that are better than what I have here. There's a ring that will just increase your physical damage, which I haven't tested it, but based on all my other testing, I would assume it makes you 10% more damage, which would just add more. If not, this is another good ring. It increases max equip load. I don't think I have this one in the description of this video, but the main thing is put whatever ring you want here. There's, you can, there's a lot of variants. You can increase your defense. You can increase your endurance. You can increase your damage a little bit more depending on what ring you have available to you. And then this one, you could do it different if you don't want to go the Umbral route and be like a different version of the build. But for the version I'm going to show you, we're going to be doing this because of the Umbral. So for the Umbral, we have Umbral Weapon, which makes us do more Wither damage with our weapons. And then we also have Diminishing Missile. And this one's amazing because it reduces the attack and the defense of a target. And then for the uh, the Inferno spells, there's Adir's Hardiness, which increases our defense and resistance, which helps a lot if we do take damage. And then there's Adir's Rage, which this one, a lot of you will miss, so you won't have this potentially. Uh, so there's an NPC, I, like in the videos in the description, but this one's from an NPC that moves around throughout your playthrough. So if you don't get it within a certain time frame, you may not be able to get it till New Game Plus if you even want to do New Game Plus. But this one increases your physical damage. I forget what the number was. It was 20 or 30 or 25% or 35%. It was something insane. It was a lot of damage. And that stacks with Umbral Weapon because Umbral Weapon is the same thing as using a Wither Salt. It's just on your weapon. 
and then this is on like a self buff so those don't interfere with each other at all and then for the other thing we want to do here is we'll actually if you really want to do crazy damage you'll swap out this searing accusation in the middle of a fight or whenever you want to you'll swap it out with your throwing hand and then in your throwing hand you'll have an enhanced snake oil grenade this thing does physical damage and poison buildup, and it reduces the enemy's physical resistance, which is the key part of this. And then there's Enhanced Accusing Spirit, and this one also it greatly increases the damage that enemies receive. And then there's also a choice here, depending on which way you want to build. There's Corrupted Banner Javelin, which is the better choice because of the way that it works. But if you want to see that crazy big like, 10,000 damage hit number, you're going to want the Enhanced Banner Javelin of Assault. And this thing, what it, the way it works, is you can throw it on the ground like this, and it'll stack up to five times. So you can throw five of these, and they last 25 seconds. Each one gives you a 10% damage buff, and when you have all five of them, you'll get 50% more damage, and that stacks with everything else. So then if you stand inside of this and then hit things, then you'll hit for 50% more on top of everything else. It's just more damage. But the more practical one to get realistically it would be use the Corrupted Banner Javelin, and this one, the way it works, you would just normally use it like a javelin, but it leaves this same thing as the one we're using right now, as far as leaving an AoE on the ground like this that stacks. But this AoE just does damage over time to any enemy that stands in it. So if you fight inside of this, the enemy will take like a cost maybe 400 damage per second or something like that, which is really nice because when you're charging your heavy attack like this and you get hit, you won't die because of the Umber Lie, but you'll take a ton of wither damage. And this thing will make you re like return that wither health damage as health more like in more increments because there is a small window of vulnerability in this. So if I'm charging this attack and I get hit, I'd only take wither damage. But right as I'm done charging it right now, right between the done charging and taking the swing, I, I'm no longer invulnerable. I still have super armor, but I'm no longer invulnerable. And so I can then take normal damage. So if you have a lot of enemies on you or you're standing in a lava pool or something like that, that's when these ba these uh, corrupted javelins come in handy because that that damage tick will be restoring your wither damage as you're taking it. So it just decreases the chances you take a ton of damage, and you can just throw them at enemies baseline, and that also will just do damage to them. So it's really more versatile. But again, if you want to see the big number, big damage numbers, then you'll do the ba banner javelin of assault instead. As for the armor, you're just going to want to put on the tankiest armor that you can find while still staying medium encumbrance, unless you really want to go heavy encumbrance, which I wouldn't recommend. And then we also have weapon runes, and that changes everything. So if you don't know what weapon runes are, first off, you need the blacksmith. If you don't know how to get the blacksmith, then um, I have a video in the description of this video called How to Unlock the Blacksmith or something like that. And then how to get weapon runes, you have to get the different, the chipped, the cracked, and the normal rune tablets and give them to the blacksmith. And I don't have a video for that, but if I ever do, I'll update the description. I'll put it in it. So if you're seeing this in it, like tomorrow sometime, I might have it by then. I just so I have a point of reference. Uh, but you just got to get the three different tablets and turn them into Gerlinde. And then after that, she'll give you this option for socket runes. Now, be aware, if you only give her two tablets, you'll be able to socket runes. But even if you upgrade your weapon, it'll only show one rune. So you have to turn in all three before you can have three runes on a weapon. So the way it works is you upgrade your equipment. And just like you would in Dark Souls or anything like that, level it up using the Derillium Shards. And then as it levels up, it unlocks rune slots. And then once it gets high enough level, it'll have three rune slots, and it's different for each weapon. Each weapon has its own unique slots. There's strength, there's agility, basically the diamond, the circle, and then there's a star, and there's a uh, diamond, a diamond, a triangle, a circle, and a star. And each one is has different runes that can go in it. So something really important that you need here is those rune tablets I just told you about. When you turn those into the blacksmith, it gives you a choice to give them to Sparky or to give them to Gerlinde. And Gerlinde is the unethical choice, but you want to give them to Gerlinde because she will give you a rune. And that rune is super important for this build. So she gives you a rune called Crafter's Essence. And what it does is it makes it so the item has no weight or stat requirements on it. And with that, coincidentally, goes really well with this Nahuda Ritual Hammer. Because this Nahuda Ritual Hammer is extremely heavy. It weighs... Uh, well, I don't, can't see here, but it weighs 30 something by default and it has crazy requirements It takes 28 strength radiance and inferno So unless you want to get those stats and carry a heavy ass hammer around all the time I'd recommend getting that but if you didn't get it It's not the end of the world You can still just get the stats and use it and so it's not like like it's not the end of the world You still be able to use it, but that's kind of the basis of this build You got to get that crafters essence it makes this thing way, lightweight easy to use then after that There's some other ones that are ideal. So there's the balago. There's the relox and then there's also the Demexis. 
So the Relox makes it so charge attacks deal increased damage. The Demexis increases physical damage while dual wielding. And then the Balago temporarily reduces a struck enemy's physical defense. So it's not really great for such a slow build, but it, it still works. Like ideally you'd put it on like uh, daggers or something because every time it hits, it decreases their defense by I think 10% or 15 or something. But if you're, I mean, it doesn't matter. You're already going to hit like 9,000 and the next time you hit 10,000 and then you hit 12,000. They're going to be dead on the second hit anyway. So what's it even matter? But it's a, you're min-maxing. You go ahead and throw in the Belago. So that is the runes. That's everything you need. And now I'm going to have to go through a little segment here. I need to explain to you how to get everything. But again, if you need anything and this guide's not explaining it in enough detail, just check the description. I made an individual video for each of the major components in this build in case you get lost and you don't know what I was talking about. So first off, you're gonna warp to the bell room, the vestige of blind Agatha. Now from here, you need to have that key that'll open the door over here. If you don't have that key and you're still early game, there's a guy at Skyrest to the right of the vestige. He'll sell you the key for 9,000 vigor. You wanna go this way. You'll eventually find yourself going up this path. If you go that way, it'll lead here. And there's a split here to go left or go to the right. You're gonna wanna go to the right, which is right around this corner right here and follow this path. Once you get out of that little cave area on the left, there'll be a vestige. I highly recommend grabbing that vestige. Then you're going to head over here to the right, and there's a few different things we're going to get here. So there's going to be the anvil hammer. There's also going to be the uh, diminishing missile. So diminishing missiles on that statue right there on the front of the hill, and the anvil hammer is right here. So you grab that, and then kill all the enemies and pull on that statue, and then you'll have the anvil hammer, and you'll have the diminishing missile. Then what you're gonna do is you're gonna head down this way to the bottom of this place. Once you get to the bottom of this place, over on the left, there's a statue here. You're gonna pull on this statue and it will drop the umbral eye that we need. So this is the base of all the build and you can see what I'm doing about how it's early game. It's right after the bell room if you get that key. You can get here and you can get the umbral eye that is the core of the build and you already have the anvil hammer. Now for the Nahuda ritual hammer and a, some, a bunch of the rune tablets, you're gonna go over this way at the bell room. And this way will eventually lead you to a path where you can go down and get, work your way down to the bottom of here where there's the blacksmith and there's the huntress boss and you can progress over to the swamp. So you're going to come out here and you're just going to run to the end of this area and there'll be a ladder to go down. Once you get down here, you're going to have to go to the umbral and you'll have to go down this ladder and you see on the other side, there's another ladder. You'll go up that ladder around. It'll lead you up to where that guy is above my head and you'll follow the wall over there. If you follow along this way, you'll eventually get over here. You can take the ladder or you can drop down on the left. This will lead to a wall that's blocked, and in order to get it, you'll have to go into the Umbral. There'll be a statue to Soul Flay on the right. There'll be a statue over there on the left. And there'll be this way down here that'll lead to a bottom area that also has a statue you can Soul Flay. And once you Soul Flay all of them, it'll reveal this, and then you can Soul Flay this, and it'll temporarily open this up so that you can go inside of here and go down further into this area. Once you get down here, there's an elevator right here. It's gone for me because I already took it, and it's at the top right now. But that'll unlock a shortcut to gear from the bell room. Then you're going to go over here and there'll also be an elevator here that's also gone for me. You go down this way and this will lead you to a whole bunch of paths that will lead you to where you need to go. Also at the bottom of here is where you can get the other thing we need, which is Adir's Rage. It's a missable thing, so if this is your first time coming here, hopefully this person's here. There's a person you talk to in the church where the second boss is, like the pyramid head looking guy. And you talk to her there, and then if you talk to her there and you come here, she'll be down here and she'll have a shop or she'll sell stuff. One of those things is Adir's Rage. If you miss that, well then if you don't get the beacon, she might be at Fitzroy's Gorge. And if you get the beacons, then she'll be at Brahma's Castle. And if you miss it there, then you'll never get a chance to get it and you'll have to do New Game Plus or something like that. But anyway, you'll go down this way, and this will lead you to the swamp. And then eventually that'll lead you to a canyon and Fitzroy's Gorge and all that. And that'll eventually get you to more rune tablets. The rune tablets will be in the description of this video. They're just like off on the side in different places. And then eventually it'll lead you to a bridge. So eventually you'll come to this bridge and you'll have to fight some fire boss on it. That will later on just be a normal enemy. And then once you beat that boss, you'll be able to progress through this. But you don't need to go any further. This is as far as we need to go. So you'll go over here and you'll go into the umbral. And I've already done it, but on the right up here, there'll be a statue to pull on. And you pull on that statue, and it'll remove one of those, like, umbral tendril root things. Then you head back here, and it'll reveal a new path over here. And there'll be an item right here by pulling on the statue. And that item will be the Nahuda Ritual Hammer. Now, one of the, I think the Chipped or Cracked Rune Tablet, it'll be this way. It'll lead to a fiery town, and then it'll lead to a boss fight, and then you'll be in another town. One of the towns will be there. Eventually, that'll lead to a place called Skyne. It's like cave system. Eventually, that can lead to Revelation Depths. 
and then revelation depths has some more things that we need but that's the own direction you could also go and we'll get to that in a second but we're going to backtrack and take a look at a different way that you're going to want to go in order to get another bunch of stuff that we need so now you're going to go back to the bell room again and you're going to go over through that door again until it gets to that split where we went left or right and we're going to go left this time so like i was saying we get to this split and instead of going right this time we're going to go left so there'll be a boss here the bell head boss you'll know what i mean and you'll go over here and you'll go up this after you beat him and there'll be a door here i think you open it with that same key we get it to use to get in here there's a chest in there that's where we get a deer's hardiness which is a very nice thing very optional though and then you're going to head over this way and if you go all the way to where the mage is at the end of this walkway you can unlock a shortcut so you can get back up here faster in case you die but whether you want to do that or not once you get here you're going to want to go up this ladder and then this ladder will lead to some traps and stuff and will lead to another ladder. So once you get up to the second ladder, this will lead up to another area that has a lift you can take, which mine's gone right now because I already took it. But you'll go up here and on the right will be a lift. You're just going to run into it and you're just going to take it immediately. So that'll lead you to the Manse of the Hallowed Brothers. You'll go over here and this is a whole bunch of paths. You'll go down these paths. There's a vestige here to get you started. Go ahead and go down this route. It's a much harder route than the other way and it'll lead to a bunch of stuff. You'll eventually end up in an area over there off in the distance where you get a key in order to go to that giant tower, the Tower of Penance. Well, also, if you get on your way to the Tower of Penance, you go left and there's like a wall. It looks like a wall, but it's actually a gate and you can take that. It'll take you over to this area. There'll be a boss fight right over there. And then after that boss fight, right up here is an item by pulling on a statue. You'll have to be in the Umbral, but there'll be a statue here. I think it was in the Umbral. Anyway, that is where you get the Enhanced Accusing Spirit. If that was too confusing, go look in the description. I have a full, like, six-minute video showing everything you need to know how to get there uh, in order to get this one. But then, after that, you're going to continue on this path from this point on. If you get to this point, it's very linear. There's a vestige right here. And then you'll head over there, and you'll just keep going until you get to the very, very end of the path. This way will eventually lead you to a church. You'll do some puzzles to get a key and stuff. But you'll go through this church. I recommend putting down a vestige seed right up here at the top of these stairs because there's a boss fight here. You've got to kill this boss in order to get a remembrance. And we need to get that remembrance in order to get the corrupted banner javelin. Also, while you're in this area, there's a vestige right here on your way in. So from right here, the other banner javelin that we need is going to be right up here, right around this corner. There's a dead body. And on that dead body, you'll be able to find the enhanced banner javelin of assault. Now we got to go back to the bell room again, and that's because I missed something that was early game. So we should have the shortcut unlocked. I showed you earlier, if you're following along, you'll have this in order to get down. If not, you have to work your way down to where the blacksmith was. So you get down here, there's a ladder, or you can just drop. And if you go over here and go this way, there's a way over here. You can open this door, and you run all the way out to this ledge. And right over here in this cage is an item. And if you grab the item from that cage, it will be the warrior's pendant or the warrior's claw. It's a pendant. The one that does physical damage and reduces physical, or take, makes you do more damage and take less damage. So another thing that worth mentioning, this tower of penance, it was in the region of the Abbey and all the stuff we did a second ago in this video. Uh, you can go in here and go around the left and there's a lift that will take you up to the top. I think mine's gone right now. There's a lever I could pull to bring it. You come in from the top and then eventually you can unlock this shortcut to just come in from the front. You gotta work your way down to this level and once you get down to this level, there will be a chest down here, right over here, and that has the rune tablet, which is one of the three things you need in order to get that rune that we need in order to make the Huda hammer weigh nothing. Another thing now, we gotta go the other way. So back where that bridge with the fire with stuff, on the way you probably saw this area. If this looks familiar to you, then you know you've been here before. And instead, go into the umbral on your way down. You would have gone that way before. You can go this little path right here. And there may be a person in here to buy that Adir's Rage. If so, buy it. Otherwise, uh, you, regardless, you're going to go down here. And at the end of this, this is where I th it was either the chipped or the cracked rune tablets. So there's another one of the rune tablets. Now we're going to progress this way and go into the uh, all the way to the city and beyond. You'll eventually end up here with this crazy guy in this corner. If you've gone far enough, it takes a long time to get here. But you'll eventually find your way over to this area. You'll drop down here, maybe put down a vestige seed right here. You'll get inside this house, and down here, there'll be this guy guarding this fireplace. In the fireplace is an item, and that's the third of the rune tablets that you need. Then after that, you're going to head over this way, and this will lead down to the Skyne Depths or whatever, basically like a cave system. And then you go that way, and it'll eventually get you down to Revelation Depths. So going through that system, it's like a bunch of puzzles and stuff. It's pretty hellish to get through. But if you make it through, it'll eventually end up in this area, and you'll fight a boss right here. And that'll lead you to a blockade that's supposed to go to Upper Calrath, a door that may not open depending on your progression. But if this looks familiar, then you've progressed far enough to get to Revelation Depths. So to get to Revelation Depths, you have to go down this way. And then you're going to have to go into the umbral. You're going to go down here and you're going to go left and then go explore this way and find a lever and then pull it. And that will remove all the water and let you drop down over here. 
Then, once you've done all that, you'll be able to go over here without Umbral, which will let you go on this other path like this. And that will lead you into here, which will take you to Revelation Depths. So a little ways into Revelation Depths, you'll eventually end up in an area like this. You'll see this wheel. You'll see all this stuff. There'll be two poison archers that are invisible here. And what you're going to do is you're going to head over to here. And there'll be this plank. And you're going to jump over to this. And then from here, you're going to jump over to this. And there'll be an item right here. And that item will be the Enhanced Snake Oil Grenade. Now, again, any of these videos, any of these items, if you need help, just check the description. I have a much longer video on how to get that and all the other items as well. Now, something I should have put right before that is another item. So the Unblinking Root. Uh, the same area that we go to to get into Revelation Depths. What we're going to do is we're going to go down here. And that area I said where you have to go to pull a lever in order to make the water go away. Well, there's a side path over here. So this area, if you go left and then right, it'll eventually lead to the lever. So you go that way, it'll lead the lever. But if you go to the right over here, it will actually lead to one of the items that we need for this build. Or at least for my version of the build. So I'm going to go up the staircase. And then you're going to head over to here. And in this room... Right here, there's an item, and that item is the Unblinking Root. Now for the runes on the weapons, one of them you have to go back to the Empyrean. You can go over here to this tower and go up top, and there's a place to put a Vestige Seed up there, so you can easily come back and go back down here and farm it. But there's this guy right here. He's the only one I know of in the entire game. And you're going to kill this guy, and then you're going to reset by running back up there over and over again. This guy has one of the runes that we need. It was the Star One, Belago, I think it was called. Now, he obviously a small chance of dropping it. You may have to kill him 10, 20, 30 times or something, but he'll eventually drop Belago. So as for the relocks, go back to the district. Go to this area we went to earlier. And you can go up here, and you can put a Vestige Seed right here. And then from here, you can rest here, and then drop down out here. And then you can use these hammers to one-shot this guy, or two-shot him, depending on how far built you are. And then he can drop the relocks. Kill him and then rotate around, rest, and repeat until you get all the relocks as you need. As for the last rune you need, the Demexis is from any of those Black Grim Reaper guys. The ones that wear the black robes instead of the red ones. You can find those in various places. Once you progress enough, you can just find them in the Umbral once you're at a 3x multiplier. So those ones you can find all over the place. I don't have a good farming spot, but that's where you get it. As for Derillium Shards, once you progress your game far enough, the Blacksmith will actually just sell you the small and regular and the large Derillium Shards. So that'll take care of that. Then you just got to farm runes. Check the description for an, uh, rune farming, or not rune farming. It's a vigor farming location uh, and a guide and stuff like that if you need vigor. And then you can just buy it all, upgrade your weapons, and get them up to at least plus 9. And finally, we have Umbral Weapon. This one's really simple. You just got to progress your game far enough. I think you have to beat that, that lady that gives us the Corrupted Banner Javelin. Once you finish that route, I think is when it unlocks. So all you got to do is go to that opposite side of Skyrest over there, go into the Umbral, and talk to Malhu again. And he'll just have it for sale once you've progressed the game far enough. And then, at that point, the build is done. You've got all the pieces, you're ready to go, and you can do exactly as I do. So now you're completely, insanely overpowered. I'm going to show you just how overpowered it is. So I'm going to fight the Iron Wayfarer. If that's a spoiler for you, just be aware. But I'm going to fight the Iron Wayfarer. I've only ever fought this guy one time. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go over to his boss arena. I'm going to use the two Aider abilities. I'm going to use the buff. And then I'm going to go through here. I'm going to traverse. And then I'm immediately going to cast the Withering thing. And then I'm going to just let him beat on me for a sec, unless he doesn't hit me. Go to my throwing hand and start throwing javelins down. Now, this is overkill. You don't have to do as many things as I'm going to do here. So it's up to you how many you do. But now I'm going to try to hit him with both the things. And then I can just face tank him. And I hit him for almost half his HP. So I can basically three shot him at this point. And there's the Iron Wayfarer. Now, I didn't even have to go that hard, right? I didn't have to throw down the javelins. I could have thrown the other javelins. I could have done it any way I wanted to do it. That's how overpowered this build is. I didn't have to try. If I just walked in with just the buffs alone, it would have been even easier. I just fight him fair and square. The most insane thing about this build was when I was working on, on it with Ape Knight Gaming, we were at a point where we were like, oh, no, there's this opening, and then you could take damage. Oh, man, maybe it's not great. And then we were like, wait a minute. What if you just played normally? Uh, oh yeah, I guess I guess if you just played normally and actually tried to beat them with this build, then you're just invincible. You literally can't die. Like we were trying to get to the point where you literally just oonga boonga and just hold a button and that's it. And it's basically that, but there are a few openings, but if you actually try and actually like fight legitimately, you basically can't die. You basically three shot the bosses and just win. So now that you see how overpowered this build is and you're finally ready to be OP like me, 
Let's take this thing full circle. So I'm going to go back to the boss that I one shot at the very beginning of the game. And instead of one shotting, I'm going to show you fighting him in a more normal way. Some way that is more practical. So what I'll do is I'll put on the searing accusation. I'll use the abilities right now for the buffs. And then I'll say to heck with the missile. Who cares about it? Let's just ahead of time swap this out with the throwing hand. And then I also have the Corrupted Banner Javelin on, which is probably better in real practical situations. It depends on the boss, though. So now I can come in here, and I can throw these on the ground. Okay, and then I can just give him a smack. I can face tank him. And you see, this thing does so much damage that I actually re restored my Wither Health the moment that he hit me because that thing was doing damage constantly. So let me just go ahead and finish him now. All right, there's Tancrit, easy enough. That's it guys, that's the build. I hope you guys enjoyed that. It took multiple days to figure this out, put all the pieces in, but got all the pieces put together. This is everything you need. Again, get the strength ring instead of the ring of bones. You could drop Unblinking Root if you want, just to decrease how complicated it is. But if you do want to see yourself get that crazy one shot, you're going to need to use Withering Missile, the Banner of Assault, and all those things, and combo all of them, and just annihilate things. But even in just day-to-day -day life, just walking through, just killing the normal enemies on paths, insane. And when you do want to burst, you know, you can do this any number of ways you want. Any way you build this, it's going to be insanely OP. It makes the game trivial. And one warning here for you about this build... It's so OP that it may trivialize the game for you. So that's the only thing to watch out for. There's like, oh, what's the problem with this build? The problem is it's so good that it may make the game boring for you because everything is so easy. I have yet to encounter literally anything in the game now that even poses the slightest challenge at all. Literally everything is easy. So that's it, guys. That's the crazy build. That's the invincible one-shot invincibility build with the double grand hammers. That's how to do it. That's how to make it OP. That's how to put all the pieces in. If you need help with any of the individual pieces, check the description. I have longer guides for each piece that I went over in this video, but hopefully it helps you out, guys. Now you know the best build in all of Lords of the Fallen.